Hello there and welcome to my next part of my build of Airfixer's 177 Fucker Wolf FW190A-8. For the canopy, that's now on, that's just being held in place with some white tack, although the front canopy is now on, and for that I've used glue and glaze, that's a PVA based glue. The primer I'm going to use is going to be this one, it's the AK Interactive, it's the white primer and micro filler. The other thing as well is I think if I was to use a black primer or a grey primer, because I'm then going to be putting blacks and greys on it could make it a lot more darker than what I want it to be. Especially if I then put a grey primer on, grey colours, black colours, then start doing um, panel lining, um, pre-shading, post-shading, it's going to make it quite a dark model. So I'm thinking, never tried this before, but thinking if I do a white primer and then put thin colours of the greys on top, then it might be a bit lighter than it normally would be, but by the time then those after shading, the weathering goes on, that should darken it down a bit, and that way, that should get it to being the colours that a true FW190 should be. So let's get the spray breathe out, let's get spraying. So I think we're pretty much set to go. I've got the booth set up. I've got my AK Interactive Primer and Micro Filler in white. You can hear the noise in there. What I've done is got a small stainless steel uh, little bolt in there. It makes sure it's the um, marine grade version. The uh, booth that I use, I've actually reviewed a few years ago. Uh, hopefully a little link will be appearing somewhere, so if you want to see the review, it is actually quite a, well, uh, to be honest, quite a cheap one off of, um, off of Amazon. It's a hobby one, it folds flat, it pumps out through the window. Uh, it's got a vent there. Let's get some primer on here and uh, see how this turns out. So as you can see, I'm doing several sm uh, low pressure dusty coats and just getting it to slowly take. Just slow, gentle passes. Last time round, it was a case of putting on the primer. I went for the AK Interactive White Primer and Micro Filler. I only put a light coat of that on there. In fact, so light, if you look closely, you can see the shades of grey, where actually I'd had the RML 66 sort of showing through and I've been doing a few things. Because it has got that filling capability, I didn't want to go on too thick, because I didn't want to fill in some of that intricate detail. However, now it has got a coat of that white primer on. So much of the detail on there that I sort of, I didn't even notice when I was doing the review is now really starting to stand out. Uh, I'm really pleased with how much detail this kit has actually got and I'm sure uh, once it actually gets painted up, get some panel line wash in there, it's really going to pop out. Before I do that though, before I get that painted, I do want to uh, do a bit of pre-shading on there and for that I'm going to use this which is a black, it's NATO black, it's Vallejo Model Air. I've got my bottle of Vallejo Model Air, I've got my FW190. I'm going to get a bit of this paint in the airbrush, only a little bit, just go over those panel lines and uh, hopefully that'll give a bit of a pre-shading effect once uh, it actually goes down. Let's crack on, get this pre-shaded. One of the good things about pre-shading is you don't have to be too neat with it and it's a great way when you're practicing with an airbrush to try to make sure you know what you're doing. Keep following the lines and if you go off the lines it's fine because it actually adds more to the organic and uh, random texture that you're looking for that you would actually have with pre-shading. You don't want just solid black lines, sometimes a bit wiggly and a bit out of place. It makes it look a lot more natural. So it's a great way to get more of a feel for how your airbrush handles. We 
you'll see I'm also trying to go a bit heavier in some of the areas where I know there's going to be staining. For example, where those guns are on the top of the fuselage and where the exhaust ports are. I'm going to make sure that's actually a lot more darker than the upper pits on the wing because they're going to get a lot dirtier a lot quicker and therefore hopefully that's just going to add a subtle little tonal difference once that paint goes on. I think we are about done there. Um, I said, just gone over, just try to get a uh, go over where all the panel lines are, get a bit of a black in there. That contrast with the white is looking a bit of a mess at the moment, quite interesting. And what's annoying is now that black's gone over, it's actually hiding away quite a lot of those panel lines that are popping out so nicely when it was just in white primer. However, once the grey starts going on, everything should all start balancing out, and those lines are going to pop out where we want them to pop out, and hopefully add more to the more natural look of shadows. The first thing to go on is going to be the RLM76. I have also just noticed I keep saying RML, not RLM, so apologies on that. Hope too many people haven't noticed that, but the RLM76, which is the base coat that goes on the bottom, of the fuselage and the wings and on the side of it. This can go on and then give that 24 hours to really harden and go off. As I've said before, the Vallejo Model Air can be quite delicate, so sometimes it needs that extra little bit of time just to really make sure it goes on before you mask it off. But I've now got my RLM76, giving that a good shake up and let's get that in the airbrush and let's get that painted on the bottom there. And I'll do a few of the other bits whilst we're there as well. Now the trick with pre-shading is to try to put the layer of paint on and just do it thinly, brushing it over in that very thin layers. What should then happen is as it starts to go down, you back off and move somewhere else. What will happen is as the paint dries, if you cover it up, the pre-shading should start coming out. But if you put it on too thick, then of course you're going to lose it. Just as you start thinking, have I done it too much? That's the bit where you stop. It's finding that balance. No point putting it on too thickly because otherwise that's the point of doing the pre-shading. However, if I stop here, you can see that that is actually just going to be far too much pre-shading on there. And it looks like I've just gone around quite heavy handed with an airbrush before starting. And what's really nice with this lighter colour now, those panel lines are now starting to pop back out again. So uh, let's get on what was to still with that paint in there. Now just for this last little bit of run out of paint, I'm pretty much done to be honest, I could stop there. But what I've done is just added an uh, extra few little drops of the RLM76 in there. Uh, literally just three little drops, that's the great thing with these. And I'm now just going to add in a touch of the Vallejo airbrush thinner. Uh, the reason is I just want to now go for a, just a thin uh, go over. Don't want to go on too thick because that panel line's starting to sort of show through. And in various lights, actually, you can sort of see the, the shadow effect coming through that. Uh, but I'm worried that if I go over a little bit too much now, I'll lose it. So I just want to go on a, a little bit more, but I'm thinning this down. That's probably about a 70% thinner uh, versus 30% paint. Hopefully with a thinner in there, that will just level everything out as well. But let's just get this turned back on. I'm still now thinking, have I done too much? But I think I've got that just the right amount on. I can still see some of the free shading, different lights. 